Hi everyone, welcome. It's a little bit unusual for me to kind of bring you into the work in progress because I'll usually sort of go through a little bit of an intro and then we'll bring the system out and uncover it and get to work on it together. But in this case, I was sort of curious with um, my main plan being to feed a couple of my newer systems, a couple of 13 day old bins in which my so-called original red worms live. And when I hold those worms out of their old environment, this environment, 13 days ago, I treated it as a um, kind of an incomplete evacuation of the castings. So what I had done was something very similar to what we see here, which is the setup of a horizontal feeding zone on one edge of the bin in order to lure the worms out. And we had a very significant haul out. We had you know, thousands and thousands of worms, enough to launch pr two pretty well populated systems. Um, but I felt like the, the exit of the worms was incomplete. As you could see here, there's still worms living in this material. And after 13 days of not seeing how things are progressing in here, I thought I would at least inspect the castings. I'm not going to meddle with the horizontal migration feeding zone. It's going to be my assumption that worms have made their way over into the feeding area, which is just beyond this piece of cardboard here, which I um, perforated full of little holes to enable worms to pass through and make their way over. But I um, I really didn't want to sort of spoil the surprise of what's going on in there. I just figured if anything else, I would um, at least come in here to make sure that the material has got a good opportunity to continue drying and hopefully become such that the little worms will want to make their way out of it and find themselves something more comfortable to be in which is what's over on the other side of the cardboard. And it does seem to me like aerating the, the contents of the, the bin to help it further dry is pro quite probably the best way to um, in, you know, instigate that movement of the worms out of the material. So my only objective here was to sort of pass my hand through the material, look for any sort of large clumps that are still holding together due to an excessive amount of moisture in it, break it apart a little bit, you know, try to surface some of the more damp material that was sitting down low, bring it out to the surface, um, at the same time submerging some of the stuff that had been out here on the surface, left to dry, so that the um, overall dryness, dampness, whatever you want to call it, of the material evens out, resulting ultimately in a, a less damp material causing the worms to gain an interest in finding themselves something more cozy to be in. And you know, the uh, haul out of worms 13 days ago from this system resulted in what we've estimated so far to be in excess of um, 4,500 worms, believe it or not. I did a pretty, um, I think I did a pretty good job splitting the um, population into two even halves Based on everyone's input, there was only a discrepancy of, I believe, 46 worms between the more populated bin, which is bin number two, and the less populated bin. Small enough population difference that I thought maybe even pulling 23 worms to split that difference out of the more populated bin and placing them into the less populated bin would give us um, an exact split of the population. But it's only been 10 days since I published that video of the worm worm bins being launched with those 4,500 worms. So I thought I'd wait a little longer to see if any other viewers kick in their thoughts on how many worms occupy each of those two new systems, which we're going to bring out in a moment to feed them for the first time since they were launched into there. I mean, it's really technically feeding number two because the bins were pre-built with food waiting for them when they got put in there. What I've got for them is some apple peel and some broccoli. So I think the system's been sufficiently tilled up and spun around a little bit, breaking bigger chunks stuff up. Um, all this hopefully contributing to the material further drying, further becoming such that the worms are going to want to make their way into the migration zone. And I believe we're simply going to wait until such a time that we can actually go through this material the way we just did and find pretty much no worms in it, at which point I, I'm going to be satisfied that the migration is complete and that the castings are such that they could be harvested and put to use and that the worms can be you know hauled out and relocated.
into their new home. So I'm going to put this bin of finished castings, still undergoing horizontal migration, back up onto the shelf, let it continue. And we're going to get out the two new systems, the 13-day-year-old, uh, did I say day-year, <laughs> day-year, 13-day-old systems and get them fed. So let's get this out of the way and let's get the, um, the two new systems out here and feed them. Oh yeah, I wanted to mention really quick before we get started, my little blunder that I made a video out of. I attempted to make a video previously feeding these two systems, but guess what I did when I turned around, came over here to fetch these bins, I went ahead and I picked up those two other bins over there that are stacked up on top of each other. Those two bins had actually just been fed the day before, so those bins over there got fed twice in a row. During that whole time I thought I was actually feeding my two new bins here. Well, this is sort of take two, so click take two. Now we're actually going to be feeding the, the systems that I wanted to feed last time. So either way, I just thought I'd mention my little screw up from the last attempt at feeding these bins. This time I'm pretty sure we're going to get it right. All right, let's get them up on the bench and we'll get them fed. All right, bin number one is what we're starting with. And I don't really know what to expect as far as leftovers, because I don't even really remember what we placed in here to feed them with last time. The stuff we're going to see right off the bat is actually stuff that came along with the worms when they were hauled out of um, out of their old environment. That was some of the material that had been placed into that horizontal feeding zone that had been there to lure the original first haul out of worms out. And for whatever reason those bits of Brussels sprout leaves are really taking a long time. I suspect that they're taking so long because they probably didn't have the benefit of being frozen before being placed into the worm bins. I mean, if you look at what's in here, you can even see just the glistening on it, just from the, um, the cold is causing the humid air to condense on it, give it that glistening look. Even the broccoli still has some of the frost on it. To me, it just seems like, um, it's not even that it seems that way, it's almost certain that materials that have been frozen and then thaw just really have a huge advantage in the worm bin of getting broken down more quickly. And by putting stuff into the systems that was um, never frozen, it just seems to ensure that the stuff is going to sit around for quite a bit longer. So I just spotted a worm cocoon there. It was easy enough to pick up and it's so dark in color. It's right there on the tip of my finger. I'm not sure if it's visible, but a worm cocoon that that's, that's that dark usually means that it's just on the verge of releasing its payload. Little baby worms coming out. As you can see, lots and lots of shredded paper and cardboard, which is the primary ingredient used to build these two systems. The material sat around for ages, sort of priming and waiting for worms to be introduced to it. And I thought we might see some evidence of what kind of foods had been placed in here prior to the worms being added. But it looks like those little hungry guys did away with it, because I don't see any evidence of what it was. Maybe it's just too soon, maybe we will bump into some leftovers, but it's actually looking like they did a heck of a job on whatever food was given to them as their welcome feast to their new environment. So. Not a lot to be seen here. Maybe it was just stuff that was going to break down quickly anyway. Whatever it was, it's gone from this point of view, from what I can tell. So I think the timing of coming back in here to feed them now is pretty well spaced in terms of how many days to wait between feedings. Sometimes I do like to just let a new system sit for a few days before coming back to it, although I'm always very curious you know, about how things are doing in the new system. So I have to sort of um, resist the urge to peek under the covers to see how the worms are doing. But luckily they're doing quite nicely in here. We're giving them another little injection of additional bedding, not that they really need it because the whole system is pretty um, thoroughly filled with plenty of bedding. So now 
these two chunks of broccoli are definitely larger than the two that I placed in there. So we'll put the little one back and then we'll put this big one in its place and now I think we'll have a fair split of the broccoli supply. And then we'll also try to be fair in leaving about half of these apple peels for bin number two. Some of these are really big. This stuff came from my mom's house. I don't see any labels on the apple peels, but if I do, I'll pull them off. I might have actually pulled them off prior to placing them in the freezer. because so I did find a little collection of stickers on the bag that these came out of. So maybe I already took the um, advanced extra measures to make sure I'm not placing all kinds of little stickers into my bin. And on top of the foods that they're getting we're going to sprinkle in a little bit of this pulverized eggshell to serve as grit. And then I want to bring back this leftovers from what they came over with originally. Let's see if having it down in the feeding zone helps this stuff get eaten. Because maybe just by being out on the surface is the reason it didn't get consumed. So I think we're in pretty good shape here as far as giving our little guys their first feeding after being moved in, although technically it now counts as feeding number two. Feeding number one was just sort of a, a silent feeding, just a feeding that was already in there waiting for them when they got launched into their new home. Moisture out here on this edge seems pretty good, although I think I did bump into one or two little pieces of stuff that felt a bit dry in my hands, but nothing terrible. Very nice, very nice. And I think we can do a quick till on this edge too, see how things look, make sure everything's consistent and comfortable. As long as I see a few worms hanging out in this stuff that tells me that the material is such that the worms consider it, consider it approachable and hospitable and they're okay exploring it, which pretty much means that it's got sufficient moisture content and I don't need to worry. All right, nice. Coming along good, coming along good. Nothing to worry about. And I had no reason to be concerned. I was fairly certain that they're going to be just fine. But I just like to kind of confirm, you know, especially in new systems like this where we've not really had much exposure to how things are progressing. We just kind of cut them loose and wait. But I think that we're in pretty good shape. So I don't have any coffee filters on hand with which we can mark where we last fed, but I'm kind of following my current basic method these days, which is to simply feed down the middle. It's just the way I've been feeding most of my systems lately, so I don't think we'll have any trouble figuring out where to return to to see how they're doing on their last feeding. It'll be right down the middle. So why don't we cover up and get the get the um, get the next bin out here. Alrighty. In we come with bin number two. And some of you might be wondering, hey, usually when you're doing twin bins or sister bins like this, Usually they're out on the table, both of them, side by side, so we can see how things look. And, I don't know, I feel like I want to change things up a little bit. To me that was sort of an experiment to see how that goes, but I also, in a way, almost prefer being able to just focus on one bin at a time. Not to mention the fact that the camera being a little bit closer this way, not trying to include two bins in the frame at once and being able to focus on only one, I believe that it pr provides us with better visibility into what's going on too. I know it takes a little bit longer, or maybe not, I'm not sure if it really influences the amount of time it takes to get the feeding done, but I don't know, I just figured maybe here we would get them one-on-one -on -one in here so we can really pay close attention to how each bin is doing rather than trying to go through that sort of pretend of you know, acting as if we're dealing with one huge bin instead of two small bins side by side. So I, I may or may not continue doing things that way, maybe once in a while, just as the mood strikes me, but I don't want to feel like I'm setting a new pattern or a new 
um, method that I need to adhere to or anything like that. So that's kind of the explanation as to why we're not doing things that way here today. You know, before we disrupt things too much here, I've already piled some stuff on here. The one thing I definitely noticed was a lot of really nice castings out here on the surface. And that could actually just be remnants of the stuff that came over with the worms when we did the haul out from their old environment. So I don't want to give myself some sort of a incorrect or false impression how castings are just piling up. Maybe that's just um, an artifact of the migration and the haul out and the launch of the worms. Because when I launched the worms into here, they didn't just come in as a batch of worms. They came in with the environment that they were um, occupying, which was the contents of the previous horizontal migration feeding zone that they got rounded up in in the other bin. So yeah, I'm definitely curious to see how long it's going to take for the depopulation of the castings so that we can do a final haul out and possibly release those additional worms that we get out of the other system into the um, into the bin number one, the other bin, considering the fact that we have sort of a trend trending estimate here that suggests that this is the more heavily occupied or more heavily populated bin. Like I said, not by many. I mean, when you're talking about numbers in excess of 2,000, a few dozen is almost a negligible amount. Possibly even reinforcing the idea of maybe just doing a, a quick exchange of just a few worms to try to balance the numbers out so that we can actually get to a point where we feel like we are actually dealing with twin bins here instead of just brother bins or sister bins. To me the twin bin idea is one where we have a pretty high degree of confidence in the two bins having a precisely um, or pretty close to precisely equal worm population. All the other factors for that are obviously in place in terms of you know how old the bins are and how the bins were prepared and everything like that how many feedings they've gotten so um, it's the buddy bins the buddy bins are ones that are just ones that have completely different lineages completely different launch dates completely different populations and I just buddy them up for some sort of a fairly basic superficial reason possibly just because they're two systems that have the same type of breed of worm living in them so right now these are sister bins or brother bins and perhaps at some point in the future We'll make the extra effort to make them into twin bins. <laughs> what do you think? Is this some sort of like an OCD problem of mine? It might be. I don't know why. Just have this weird fixation, preoccupation with the numbers. Maybe that's one of the problems with having a, a spreadsheet and a place to keep all your records is that you keep looking back on those records and coming up with weird harebrained schemes of how you can dial in the numbers to see consistency and patterns where there really aren't any <laughs> all right so let's not forget to see about bringing these little bits of Brussels sprout leaves into the feeding area as well the stuff that came over with the worms from their old horizontal migration feeding zone stuff taking quite some time to break down at this point oddly enough so yeah Good number of worms hanging out here. Here too, I saw no signs of anything that resembled le leftovers of the um, the food that was placed in here to greet them when they first got placed in here. And I really made no record of it, and I have no video footage of it either. It was just something I did really quick prior to plopping the worms in, so I guess it'll just be a, a mystery of what it was. The only record of it is just the little notation in my spreadsheet indicating that Besides being launched with worms that day, it was also fed. All right, so I've pretty much confirmed how things look on this outer edge to my left. Now we can do the same over here to my right, and we'll be pretty much finished. I guess another thing just quickly worth mentioning before we wrap up here, one of my things lately has been... Um, you know, verbally expressed a number of times, which was sort of a new methodology to running my newer worm bins, which was to try to take greater advantage of the space in my systems rather than 
starting systems with a very small quantity of material for the worms to occupy in the beginning and then working your way up to hitting the capacity of the container. I was starting into this idea of maybe starting my bins with a great deal more material in them to take greater advantage of the space and possibly even by doing so spurring on the you know the mating reflex that worms seem to have when they feel like they've got a you know good spacious um, home to explore and to live in and to build up with greater amounts of worms living in it but um I've kind of pulled away from that thinking because it did feel to me like with a couple of those bins where I did employ that thinking that I was just so close to um, hitting the rim every time I would do what I do which is kind of shove stuff around and excavate I really did feel like I had sort of worked myself into a corner there so to speak by leaving myself insuffic insufficient space to do what I like to do which is to dig holes and to shove stuff around so I've kind of departed from that thinking I believe I mean there is more in here than you would normally see in some of my bins so I am sort of coming up with a kind of a um, an approach that takes advantage of some of that thinking by going bigger on the amount of material that I use to launch new bins but not as extreme as I had been in a couple of the systems where I found it to be a little counterproductive so that's possibly why some of you might have noticed how we're not quite as capacity as I am in some of my other systems where I was trying to follow that updated methodology so I mean what can you do you gotta try new things and explore and take you know take the good with the bad and then always um, pick out the things that seem to work and then eliminate the things that seem to work against you that's how you learn that's how you grow all right everyone that's it for our check-in now with um, our 13 day two sister bins of original red wiggler worms and um, yeah I guess the next time we check in on these might be pretty soon it didn't seem like a very generous feeding so maybe we'll be back in here um, in a period of time that's perhaps less than 13 days so that's it for the video everyone hopefully you enjoyed it before I go let me really quickly say thank you thank you so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed it if you did as always please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go that's always really appreciated and if you haven't done so already please also consider subscribing to the channel that's very much appreciated as well all right everyone thanks for watching have a great day bye now